I'm told that this part of Pulaski County is actually called the Good Hope Community. And I'm told that now this community will live up to its name, providing help for a family that lost everything. Relatives say Brian Ping was lucky to get out alive when he saw something explode in his fireplace about 8 Tuesday morning. My heart filled and goes out to the family of the guy, that, the Ping boy that lived there. I mean, I knew the family, and uh, it's just a sad time this time of the year. Ronald Larkin has lived in this part of Pulaski County for more than 50 years, and he's seen his neighbors step up to help each other many times. Knowing the family and things would try to donate, take up collections, or find out what their needs is and try to help them in some way or another. This Pink's family says he escaped with only the clothes on his back and suffered a burned arm and a leg. Firefighters aren't sure how it started. Dispatch's original call, I believe, said that it was coming out of the fireplace, but I think that was their original call on it. Ping was able to pull vehicles and a boat away from the flames, but everything else was lost. Well, this time of the year, I think it's very sad. It's sad any time of the year, but this close to Christmas, and it's just terrible to lose your home and everything you've got. I mean, I just can't imagine. Well, relatives say that they feel for Ping, but also his 10 and 16 year old boys who lost many of their possessions. In Pulaski County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Moments after his wife lay in her bed with two gunshot wounds. 911. I just shot my wife. Chris Chumbly called police. What happened again? I just, you need to come out of here. Tell me what happened, sir. Give me a place. Down in. I'm under arrest. From jail, Chumbly says he shot his wife with a 32 handgun because she was terminally ill with breast cancer. I shot her. Did you kill her? She died from my shots. She told me she wanted me to end the pain. I said, Jay, I said, all I've got is what the doctors gave you, the medicine, the pain pill. And she said, no. She said, I've took enough of them. I want you to stop my pain for good. We're still investigating this. It's in its early stages, and there are other people to interview on this case. So we're, we're not going to speculate at this point as to what the circumstances of the shooting were. Well, obviously a very sad and tragic end to what neighbors describe as a marriage that had gone on for more than 20 years and one that was very loving between the two. But they say that in the last couple of years, this cancer had gotten the best of her. We could hear her at nights like she was gasping for air. Chumley pleaded not guilty to murder charges in Laurel District Court. He's in jail on $200,000 cash bond. He doesn't blame police for arresting him. I just did what she asked. Police say Chumley gave them no trouble when they arrived to arrest him after the shooting this morning. In Laurel County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. I'm standing in the garage of what used to be someone's home. The pile behind me is what's left of everything that once stood here. This is the type of situation that a lot of people are getting used to here in Moore, Oklahoma, and it's where Kentuckians are on the ground doing whatever they can to help people's lives get back to normal. Don McGowan is a retired truck driver from Cynthiana, but today he's a Red Cross volunteer. He and a few others made the 13 hour drive to provide disaster relief near the schools and more. Also where the tornado inflicted the most damage. He's been set up near the elementary school where there's a makeshift memorial of wooden crosses where children were among the victims. McGowan has worked numerous disasters, but he says he's never seen anything like this. It's really hard to comprehend. You look at things and you think, how would you start over? You know, this is my whole world in a pile like behind me. It's hard to, we don't realize how fortunately we are day by day that we're not involved in things like this. Some of the volunteers arrived just a couple of days after the tornado touched down. Others got here a couple of days ago. At 11 o'clock, we'll have much more on what Kentuckians are doing here. In Moore, Oklahoma, Phil Pendleton, now back to you. Needless to say, it has been a very stormy and a very dangerous night for some here in Oklahoma City. It's here where Kentuckians are trying to help people recover from the May 20th storm and a day in which a new round of storms cut the work early. 
The skies over Oklahoma City took on an ominous look Friday afternoon as Red Cross volunteers were told to cut their workday short. And they're talking about trying to have everybody in roughly about 3 o'clock or so. They're already pulling some of the groups off because of the weather's changing again. Summer storms are serious business in Tornado Alley and volunteers know that all too well especially from what they've seen these past couple of days. More aware of what can really happen. You don't think that your house can just be totally blown away, and it can be. Russell Hoff of Lexington is on his first disaster relief mission for the American Red Cross. He's feeding victims and other volunteers. Don McGowan of Cynthiana is providing first aid and health services. He's taken back by the resiliency of the people that have lost everything and from hearing about their survival stories. And they could actually feel the tornado go over their house. They were physically holding down the door of their shelter. Knowing that they've seen something they may not ever see again. You're looking at solid miles straight of nothing but piles of debris. Some of the houses look, they're just toothpicks. You know, they're digging through their stuff and trying to find stuff and it's all covered with insulation and it's all wet and, and basically they have nothing left. I mean, the house is gone, their stuff is gone. I chose to ride out the storm here here in my hotel room near the Tinker Air Force Base. Now through the evening tonight, there's been lots of rain, heavy winds, hail and some tornadoes. In fact, some of these tornadoes they said had winds in excess of 150 miles an hour. In Oklahoma City, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Brad Reynolds grew up in Whitesburg. He's a Kentucky Wildcat fan. He went to Rick Bettino's basketball camp as a kid, but today he's a freelance photographer for the Weather Channel, and he says he's lucky to be alive. Reynolds and his crew were traveling on Highway 81 near El Reno when the skies turned treacherous and funnel clouds began forming. He says the purpose of what they do is to find tornadoes and inform people of the dangers coming their way. But Friday afternoon, he says the danger literally found them. I remember it was really quiet, and then I was just holding on to anything I could, just trying to brace myself for the for the fall. Wow. Uh, any? I mean, you look fine. I mean, any, any injuries? Uh, I got some, like bruises on my back, but I don't know. I don't know. I should have been. I should have been dead. There were three people in this car when the winds picked it up and carried it the length of two football fields. Now, Riddles tells me he knows how he survived the crash. We'll tell you what his reasoning is coming up at 11 o'clock. But for now, in El Reno, Oklahoma, Phil Pendleton, WKYT.